Hello and welcome. So I really like this integral because it's deceptively easy. Um, most people would go about this integral using trig sub, as you may have learned in Calc 2 or whatever, but actually there's a way easier way to go about this, and it's pretty analogous to trig sub, but it's a lot easier. So when there's trig sub, there's also hyperbolic trig sub. And so if you remember, every trig sub integral kind of stemmed from the same formula, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals one. And so hyperbolic trig sub kind of stems from a very similar formula. And so I'll write that formula here. This is just gonna be cosh squared of x minus cinch squared of x. And that's gonna go ahead and equal one. And so just like how we had a analogous version of this equation for trig sub, this is kind of the one you wanna pay attention to for hyperbolic trig sub. And in this case, actually making use of this equation is gonna make this integral a whole lot easier than just standard trig sub. So we're gonna go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by cosh squared of x, and that's gonna give us a one minus, and then what's cinch over cosh? Well, hyperbolic trigonometric functions are so analogous to the regular versions that a cinch over cosh is a tanch, right? The hyperbolic version of tangent. So this is a tanch squared of x, and so then we have a one over cosh squared of x. And again, analogous to the identities for regular trigonometric functions, if you remember, one over cosine is secant. So a one over cosh is gonna be sech, or however you pronounce that one, I actually don't really know. Um, so all that to say, one over cosh squared of x is gonna be sech squared of x. Just the hyperbolic version of secant. And so maybe now I can tell you exactly why this equation is so important. If you take a look at our integral right here, you see the denominator is a one minus z squared, right? And so this equation is in some form of one minus a variable squared, right? And so maybe because we see a one minus here and a one minus here, what would happen if we set z equal to tanch? Because then the denominator would totally satisfy this property, right? Then we could rewrite the denominator as sech squared of x, but let's go ahead and find out if this helps, right? And it ends up that it really does help. So for this integral, let's say we let z equal tanch of x, okay? And so therefore we need to figure out what dz equals. And so dz is just gonna be the derivative of tanch multiplied by dx. And so what's the derivative of tanch? Well, just like how the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x, the derivative of tanch is sech squared of x. So we're gonna have a sech squared of x dx. Okay, so maybe now we can see that this integral is going to actually be a dz, right? So sech squared of x over a one minus tanch squared of x and then dx from here. This is actually the same thing. That's because we replaced dz with what we found based of our substitution of z and we replaced our denominator based off of our substitution of z. And you may notice that this denominator is actually equal to sech squared of x, right? Because of that nice property that we derived from sort of the base equation of hyperbolic trig sub. So this integral is actually sech squared of x over sech squared of x. And of course, anything over itself is just gonna be one. So we've simplified this integral so much that it's literally just the integral of dx, which we know is going to be x. Okay, so all that's left is to relate x and our original variable z. So we have a relation, nice and right here, right? We know that z equals tanch of x, so then what's x? Well, if we took the arctanch of x, just like if we were gonna solve for a regular trigonometric function, then this would work here too. So this equation is also telling us that the arctanch of z equals x because a tanch and an arctanch are gonna cancel. So we just took the arctanch of both sides. What does this tell us? That this integral, which was equal to x, is actually equal to the arctanch of z. And so that's actually gonna be our final answer. And you can see there were really not so many steps here. Really all that could go wrong here is you're just not familiar with hyperbolic trig sub. 
and that's okay. It's not something that they necessarily go over very much in calculus classes. It just ends up being a super, super useful tool that maybe you should pay attention to somewhere down the line, right? But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and let me know if there's any other specific integrals you want me to go over or more you know, topics like hyperbolic trig sub. All right, thank you.